Hi, I'm Mark Donovan for Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to go over the topic of the four forces that affect an aircraft in flight. So stay tuned. All right, let's get into it. The forces acting on an aircraft. We've got four forces that act on an aircraft uh, while it's in flight. We have two forces that work in the horizontal axis um, that work to oppose each other. Uh, the first one is thrust, which comes from the engines and the propeller, um, and they work uh, to move the aircraft forward. Then we have a, an opposing force known as drag uh, that opposes the thrust and works to effectively slow the aircraft down. In the vertical axis, we've got two opposing forces as well. We have lift, which enables flight by keeping the airplane in the air by holding up the wings. And thrust, by the way, is required to produce that lift. And then we have weight, uh, which opposes lift and works to pull the aircraft towards the ground. And notice we didn't say gravity. Uh, weight is a function of the mass of the object um, multiplied by the gravitational pull of the Earth. So we've got weight. Uh, it's not gravity or mass here. It's actually weight for the vertical force uh, that's pulling the aircraft down toward the ground. So let's talk about the effects of acceleration on opposing forces. It's important to understand that when an aircraft is in unaccelerated flight, the opposing forces equal one another. Thrust will always directly oppose drag, and lift will always directly oppose weight. It's only in accelerated flight that the opposing forces are no longer in equilibrium with each other. So if we look over here to the right, uh, we've got a lift and we've got a weight um, forces, force vectors. They oppose each other, and then we've got drag and thrust. If these um, force forces are equal uh, value, uh, the aircraft has a net result of thrust and drag of zero, and similarly if lift and weight are equal, the net sum force of the two of those is equal to zero. Look at a scenario here where if we increase um, the aircraft's airspeed in level flight, look what happens to the thrust vector compared to particularly the drag vector. As we move forward, you see the thrust vector gets larger, and then it shrinks as it reaches its new velocity of 125 knots. So we didn't have any climb or descend, so there's no change in the vectors, force vectors from terms of lift or weight. We just had an increase of thrust relative to drag, thus it was out of equilibrium and the aircraft accelerated. Once we got to a new airspeed of 125 knots, the thrust was reduced back to the drag um, level, and we were now in equilibrium and had a sum net force of zero between the thrust and drag. And now we just fly at level flight at 125 knots. Here's scenario two, an aircraft is climbing at a constant airspeed. You'll see here we've got a lift vector component that's going to increase as we climb an altitude from 3,000 feet to 4,000 feet. So notice the lift vector getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we go up in altitude. Uh, the drag and thrust did not change because we kept the airspeed constant. Uh, the weight stayed the same, but the lift vector got bigger um, due to the climb. Scenario three is an aircraft is descending, constant airspeed descent. So we're going to go over some period of time here and descend from 4,000 to 3,000 with our airspeed staying constant. Basically, we're going to deaccelerate here in this case. And so as we deaccelerate, we've got an increased vector of weight. And the lift vector stayed the same, but since the weight increased for a period of time, we descended. The drag and thrust vectors stayed equal, and so the net sum of the two of them was zero. And the last scenarios I'm going to show here is an aircraft climbing, um, but going to a lower airspeed um, as it's climbing. So I've got two fa factors here, two vectors that are going to increase. We've got a lift vector because we're climbing, and we're going to be slowing down so we have more drag relative to thrust. So as the aircraft ascends and slows down to a slower airspeed of 90 knots, during that acceleration of the climb, we saw more drag which caused us to have the airspeed slow down, and we had more lift, which caused us to go up in altitude. Once we reached 4,000 feet and stabilized at 90 knots, uh, the aircraft's all four forces were now back in equilibrium, the opposing forces. Lift equaled weight again, thrust equaled drag, the net sum of the opposing forces was zero. So you can see in this example here, as I'm taking off, I've applied full power. The thrust now is exceeding the drag, so I'm moving forward. As the aircraft moves through the relative air, the air goes over the wing and gives a lift, additional lift, and that lift vector is more than the weight vector. And so now what I'm doing is I'm now um, moving forward, climbing um, in altitude and increasing in airspeed in 
in accelerated flight. Once I level off and stable out in altitude and airspeed, I'm then in unaccelerated flight. In this situation, I'm on a downwind leg, and as a result, I'm in equilibrium. Uh, all the forces, opposing forces equal each other because I'm in constant airspeed and constant altitude. And here I'm coming in for a landing. I've got a constant airspeed, but I am descending, so my weight vector is larger than my lift vector. And as a result, that's causing the descent. My thrust vector and drag vector are equal to each other, opposing each other, so that's why I'm having constant airspeed as I come in for this landing. And finally here, as I come in for a landing, my airspeed's slowing down, uh, so my drag is more than my thrust vector. Uh, it was a th decreasing in thrust vector. I'm losing lift, so my weight vector is getting more than my lift vector, and I'm descending, and I touch down for the landing. So those are the four forces that affect flight and actually enable flight to happen. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified of my next video.